Welcome y'all, it's Wes with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thank you so much for joining us. Many folks have been calling and messaging me asking about manure-based products to be used as fertilizers on their food plots. While this is a great thing and it starts a really good discussion on soil health and the benefits of using manure natural-based fertilizers versus using synthetic fertilizers, I wanted to make a video discussing some of the pros and cons of using some of these products, some of the things that we need to watch out for, and some of the things that are really good about these products that can really increase our soil health and very much help our food plots succeed. My name is Wes, I run the channel DIY Food Plot Pro. I've got a Bachelor of Science in Agronomy. I farm for a living and I have an 1800 acre whitetail deer hunting outfitter in Western Kentucky. The plots that I produce on the channel aid us in feeding and hunting the whitetails that we are blessed to hunt here in Western Kentucky. As soil health is on the minds of more and more folks, and I get more and more questions about soil health. I think it's a wonderful thing that many folks are conservation minded. They are wanting to increase soil health and they're wanting to leave the soil in better shape than what it was when they got it, which is a wonderful thing. There are some things that we need to watch out for on these manures. And there are also some very good things that these manures do to our soil and that's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. So there's a lot of products that are marketed towards food plotters that make a lot of big accusations saying their product does this and it does that. I'm very vocal about that on the channel it's showing y'all what's the truth and what's not. I don't see this so much with manure fertilizers. I think the accusations they make are largely true. Manure has been and con will continue to be a great form of soil building. It is great for adding organic matter to the soil. It is great for adding porosity to the soil. It increases soil drainage. There are multiple different advantages to using manure and that's leaving out one of the most important is the nutrient availability. There are several forms of manure that are very good in nutrient availability, much higher than what, say, compost is. Compost has generally extremely low values of nutrient analysis, where manure forms can have higher, they're typically not as high as synthetic fertilizers, but still we can get some amounts of nutrients out of these manures more so than what we do with compost. But there also are things that we really need to watch out for when we're putting manure down on food plot. There can be pathogens and disease. There can also be a tremendous amount of weed and noxious seed that's in that manure. That is one thing that has really steered me away from using a lot of the manure that you're getting, say from like a horse barn or a cattle lot or something like that, is you really don't know what those cows, what those horses have been eating. Horses don't typically eat as much variety as an old cow does, but an old cow will eat just about anything and anything he eats, it's gonna be pooped out. And then all of a sudden that manure has those seeds in it. It's mother's nature's way of spreading the seeds. You can think you're doing really, really good and go to the local cattle yard and pick up a ton of manure and spread it out there on your food plots and think, man, I have done good for my soil health, for my building my organic matter, things like that. And then in three, four weeks time, you start seeing all these weeds that you've never seen in this food plot before, uh, noxious weeds. And you think, oh my goodness, where'd all that come from? A lot of times that comes from that manure that you spread out there on that food plot. So there are some things that we have to watch out for when we're applying these manures to our food plots. It's best to have a manure that is at least set for a long period of time or has been heated up to kill those pathogens and diseases and also to kill those weed seeds. There could be an awful lot of things in fresh manure, but as longer that manure sits there and heats up and continues to build heat, the less and less likely that those things are going to be in that manure and they're gonna be viable when you spread them onto the food plot. Another thing that is difficult on using manure is you have way different fertilizer analysis. Chicken manure and 
hog manure look very, very differently from a nutrient analysis standpoint. And that's going to change across from horse manure to cow manure, chicken, turkey, name the animal, that's going to change a little bit as you go across all the different animals. First off, we really do need to know what the analysis is in the manure that we're applying to those food plots. We don't want to be wasteful. We don't want to have a bunch of nutrient runoff by applying way too much nutrients. And we also don't want to do any more work than what we absolutely have to, to increase those the soil health out there. So if a ton will do it, we don't want to put six ton out there. We're going to have a lot of runoff, those heavy rains, a lot of the nutrients that we put down are going to run off into the ditches, they're going to get into the creeks and the rivers. That's not a good thing. We're not looking at that. So we definitely want to know and need to know what the analysis is of the manures that we're putting on. One of the biggest issues with using these forms, and it's similar to the compost, it's a little bit better than the compost, is the fact that usually the nutrient analysis is low in manures. We're talking about adding a tremendous amount of pounds per acre out here to be able to get the same nutrients that we're getting in those synthetic fertilizers that we apply, you know, out of a truck or a hundred pound bag or, or however we get those, those analysis are usually much higher than manure fertilizers. Because of that, we are typically looking at a very large amount of pounds per acre required. A lot of times you're looking at somewhere around 2000 pounds per acre to get the nutrient needs required to grow a crop. So that brings on a whole nother ball game as far as when you start talking about broadcasting 2,000 pounds of manure on a two acre food plot, you're looking at 4,000 pounds of product. A lot of manures do not spread really good unless you have the specialized equipment. At that point, you have to have some way of loading the manure into that equipment to spread. That is one big downfall of the manures is it takes a large amount of equipment to be able to do what basically a tractor and a spreader can do with synthetic fertilizers. Now there's a newer product out there that they are beginning to pelletize this manure. Makes it much easier for spreading. It makes it much easier for shipping. As long as that has been heated up and is safe from the pathogen diseases, I'm good with that. But the fertilizer analysis in the two products that I have looked at are low. The two that I looked at for raising a corn crop we're gonna require somewhere between 1,700 and 2,000 pounds of product per acre to be able to raise a successful corn plot. And you might still have to add a little bit of nitrogen in there. Obviously that's very dependent upon your soil's natural fertility. If you have very high levels phosphorus and potassium, you're basically just looking at a lot of nitrogen to raise some of those nitrogen loving crops like corn, sunflowers, brassicas, things like that. If you're going to go with these pelleted manures, you got to treat this just like your synthetic fertilizers. You're looking at soil tests, you're applying that 2,000 pounds per acre or whatever the recommended rate is for the amount of nutrients that you need. You raise that crop out there and then you take soil samples the following spring and you monitor those levels. Are they going up? Are they going down? They stayed about the same. There are a lot of advantages to using these manures rather than using the synthetic fertilizer. Highly acidic synthetic fertilizers pull the soil pH down. That's things like nitrogen. So the more nitrogen that you apply, the lower your soil pH is going to go. Here in Western Kentucky, because of the nitrogen added to a corn crop and the natural soil pH, most years I'm losing about 0.5 points per year. So if I start out at 6.5 the time I raise that corn crop out there, the following spring when I take that soil sample, if I don't add any lime or anything like that, it's gonna be around 6.0. That will be something that reoccurs every year that you can monitor that on your soil test. You need to do the exact same thing with these pelleted manures, monitor that soil test. So I have no problem whatsoever using these pelleted versions. I like those, I think they're a lot more safe than just standard regular manure that you go to a cattle yard, load up in the pickup truck and go spread out there on the food plot. There are times I think you can do 
more harm than good that way. There's also a little bit of a concern when you go to that livestock yard and you start scooping up cow manure is, did that farmer spray that yard with chemicals? I have seen and heard folks doing this and they put a lot of manure on their fields or food plots and that farmer had sprayed around, tried to kill those noxious weeds and those weeds are harder to kill so they usually don't just use Roundup. So at that time you can be putting those chemicals back on your field and they may have negative effects on some of your food plots. So that is another concern. If I was going to use this, I would want to be buying in bulk and I would be wanting to use from these pelleted companies, but I would also understand that the rate that you're gonna to have to apply is much, much higher than what it would be for synthetic fertilizers. Where a corn crop, I might have to add five to 600 pounds of fertilizer, where with using pelleted manure, you're looking at maybe adding 2,000 pounds uh, of fertilizer. So there is a difference there, and it's something that we all should be aware of. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please smash that like and subscribe button.